In consideration of F8, which I, in my opinion, think is one of the strongest albums thus far from Five Finger Death Punch, I am more than looking forward to new music from them. And we now have a new album, I believe, coming out. I forget the release date, but I believe it's going to be coming out pretty soon. Either way. I love this group. I'm very much myself into type, into metal music. I do prefer like a variety of genres, but hard rock, metal, that's what really appeals to me. And Five Figure Death Punch has been a signature on my playlist for a long time. I mean, it did take me a while for me to get into their music. And granted, you know, I'm not always the biggest fan of like overly explicit tracks. And they do tend to swear quite a bit in their lyrics, but um, the energy to their songs, as well as, you know, just the general feeling I have from some of their videos and some of their stances, you know, I think... They're a very strong group, and their oppression doesn't it, it doesn't leave you that easily. But since I first started listening to them, I've really come to love them over the years, and they've really become, again, a signature uh, band on my playlist for a long time. And I haven't listened to every track from them, Full Confession. I haven't gone to every one of their like past albums, but F8, I loved. Let's see how... I think the album name here is Afterlife. The title track is named Afterlife, and what we're going to be listening to is the subject of the coverage today, but um, I, think the, I think the album name is Afterlife, I'm pretty sure. But it's got a nice, you know, it's got a fun little image of them, like the skeleton pattern and all that. That's very much up their alley. But I'm excited to give Five Figure Death Punch some recognition on this channel. Again, I wish I had for F8. It maybe it's one of those regrets, things I haven't covered. But I wasn't covering music at that point as diligently as I am now. I mean, again, as I've stated previously, Star Set, another one of my favorite rock groups, was the doorway into this. I've always wanted to do music, rea or music reactions. I just never got around to it. I tend to cover, again, a wide variety of content on this channel. And music, for me, over the years, has very much been a first love in, in comparison to other art forms. I mean, there's so many different ways for you know art to be edifying and enjoyable in expression, but music has been a long-time staple of my life for you know, a variety of reasons. But I really wanted to be able to talk about more groups like Five Figure Death Punch. I wish I had been able to for, for F8. And maybe I will. Not in this channel specifically, because this is much more reaction-based. But if you're more interested in like some of the traits, specific traits I integrate into these musical uh, coverage videos regarding to like music analysis, or just the overall talk about theme, or just enjoying the tune and deliberating over music, I would recommend... The channel's not up yet, but I've been teasing it for a while, but I have a channel in the works that I hope to debut in January of 2023. It's called Symphonies and Small Talk. And these channels are going to be linked. This will be based on music reaction actions, although that one is going to allow me to talk about music that maybe is previously released, um, maybe music you didn't even know about necessarily on a first impression, but it's going to allow me to dive into music that's truly inspired me over the years and be able to look at music at a more um, intrinsic level. It's going to open a lot of doorways I don't necessarily have the most access to yet, but on this channel, but I'm, I'm very excited for its arrival, and I'm pretty sure I'll be able to integrate some of F8's uh, tracks onto that one and be able to feature you know, uh, Five Figure Death Punch is a staple there. But let's go ahead and take a listen to Afterlife and see how the song is. Again, if it's anything like F8, I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. And of course, uh, I'm not only going to play the track for you, but I will also display the lyrics so you can follow along if you choose to you know, follow along with the passage of what he's saying. I haven't read them in detail yet, but I'm excited to see where he's coming from in, ter in terms of his heart and the overall impression I have from the song of what the album will be like. Here we go. Afterlife. Let me get it rolling. Soft opening. F8, I think, had a bit of a stronger opening. It's a little more ominous. In my opinion. Oh, never mind. It's not as frenetic as some of their other songs, but I, I'm okay with it. This guy has dark energy in terms of the, the overall vocality. I love that. Ivan Moody, he's fantastic. Real gem in the hardcore uh, uh, metal side. Oh, that's good. That's got a soft, uh, a, a softness to it. It's very unique, and especially blending the harsher side of the, the instruments.
Oh, that's background vocals. I mean, that's also a signature on ever past work from either Death Punch, but I just love it every time. This piece, it, 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 this verse right here, just really sticks with you. Just the variance in the pitch, though, and the speed, uh, just the feeling of the impression with the blend of the track. It's a good thing. Here we go, entering the rift. <laughs> oh! That's not bad. I was thinking we were just gonna jump right into the second verse, or the next verse coming out, but. I think this is a good way to transition into it. That's actually really good. Smart. Some thoughts. I feel like we it again from the perspective of a Christian. This is actually kind of interesting. Maybe you have to look into it a bit deeper, but a little bit some stuff talking about. It's pretty substantive. It only ends in the soft pitch, it makes it like 26 seconds of a song. It's kind of lessening the energy. I'm interested to see maybe what the transition will be in the next piece. It's gonna, it's gonna lessen the energy just a bit. Maybe that's more methodical. That's good. Um, signature FFDP style. I mean, that's if you're familiar with them, obviously their music, it's very similar to some of their past work, but I like it, especially on that second, uh, the verse of horror, it goes on and on and on and on and on. The way that they blend that, the, the, the music, it, it takes a bit of a softer direction, but it's still got that, that aggressiveness behind it. Um, and the fact that Ivan's uh, vocals at that point are much more melodic, it, it's, I, I, I thought it was a really unique, um, transition between the chorus and the first verse they just it wasn't something i expected and i kind of maybe expected maybe to fall for the same flow in regard to the energy but it wasn't it was a bit different it's impressive the song itself um i don't know if this is pertinent to the entire nature of the album but again when i was doing like a preliminary read and again i didn't look at it too deeply i've maybe seen some lines in here but uh I did see some people suggesting, uh, let me see, George George Spencer on song meanings and facts. I was looking to see, like, what is exactly he, he talking about? Um, in perspective of afterlife. I mean, it's a pretty direct concept. And speaking as a Christian, you know, on a first read, the religious terms, like, you know, speaking of, like, I, I, don't, want, I don't want to wait for heaven to change things or whatever. Obviously, that immediately, you know, I, I caught on what he was saying. But it's interesting to me if it was like more metaphorical or if he was speaking more directly. At some level, when I read it, I maybe interpreted it more on a first impression as a direct statement um, rather than maybe figurative in nature, which I think some of these other um, uh, um, fans out there have interpreted it that way. And I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But just looking at it at first glance, I was like, well, you know, it's kind of a sad disposition to take. I mean, I, I, I kind of understood part of what he was talking about. I think it it got better again with that more abstract illustration. But I reading it at first, I was kind of like, well, you know, I, I don't necessarily agree. I think there's some value, you know, in, in maybe waiting for heaven, right? I think that, that goal of something looking forward to, right, especially for a path to salvation that is, you know, open to everybody should, you know, man, or should individuals choose to accept it. I think it, it, it imbues a pretty hopeful spirit. Then to read it here, it's like, oh, it just came across again for more a, a sadder disposition. But it could be just speaking maybe the reality of the individual at the time it, you know, of obvious trouble. Um, or it's maybe general society, because he, he's expanded this beyond the individual uh, later on in the lyrics with, I don't want, well, 
he, the band overall, whoever wrote the lyrics, I don't want to wait for heaven to save us. So it's more broad in reach. Um, so obviously there's something going on from a troublesome situation. If you read in maybe some of the interpretations online, perhaps I'm cheating and being like, we well, should come up with the analysis yourself. Well, I was curious to see what other people were thinking. Because again, the way I interpret it was, is, is this like a direct address? Is it more metaphorical? And sometimes, you know, when you look at written in, um, uh, um, statements from other fans, Maybe there's statements you pick up on that the artist has made that I you wouldn't necessarily see. At least I didn't. Um, fresh eyes for the most part, other than reading the lyrics originally and maybe pulling up this page. But he's uh, George spoke on this. I mean, he mentions a couple of different concepts of what the track could be stating because afterlife could be more abstract or you know heaven being in a ima- uh, in the context of a song, an imagined representation of a helpful, hopeful aid. He says, uh, where is it? Paragraph, I want to say six. No, five. Going back to the chorus, but the vocalist also seems to be putting forth is that he's not the kind of person who puts his hope in outside controlling entities. Instead, he's the type to take initiative in terms of making his own life better or something like that. Uh, paragraph six. So in summation, it's as if what Five Figure Death Punch is saying is don't be a gimp. <laughs> Instead, people should be brave enough to lead their own lives instead of putting the onus on individuals who ultimately prove oppressive. Well, you know, it's very, I wonder what inspired them to write it this way. Looking back on their past um, work, there's been a couple times where, and again, you, music's very unique and oftentimes with the lyrical writing and how you can interpret it and apply it to your own life and your own situations, but Five Finger Death Punch has offered at least some direct um, input as to exterior factors that might in some way encompass looking at the song and finding something more edifying. For example, the video for like Living the Dream was pretty direct on that. I like that song, by the way, but it was just like, it wasn't what I anticipated, but I was like, you know, hey, bold move. Um, So aligning this perhaps to, as I'm sure many bands do, um, exterior inspiration, it's not unheard of. And I think maybe there's, there is a sense of what I could see, but I think if you look at it more broadly and just try to personally apply it, I'd say generally, if you think of heaven as an abstract entity and not necessarily as a direct reference to spiritual matters in this context, um, maybe what they're speaking of, you know, it's just in my situation, I want to get control of something rather than looking perhaps to a potential aid that might not, again, I'm saying this as a Christian, so I know maybe what how it sounds, but that's why I'm trying to be very... Uh, um, concise in how I express this. If you're looking at from the from the disposition of, well, in, in the current circumstance of my life, I don't know if this hopeful remedy is going to come. Not necessarily being heaven directly, but maybe being something else. But you don't, would you ever seize control now and perhaps repair a situation yourself rather than maybe waiting for something that, whatever it is, might not ever come? I get it. And it's kind of, you know, to, to say it, Simply, it's been a journey of sorts for me over the last couple um, years relating to um, just the way the world's gone, different matters, just different personal aspects of my own life even. Do I want to wait for the world to, you know, do something? Whatever it might be to fix some sort of problem or do I want to, you know, take the reins and assert control? I'm much more, I've become, I used to be, for factors that I will not necessarily state as directly here, maybe eventually, maybe symphonies and small talk will, well, I know it will encompass this a bit more. I'm just not ready to say it exactly yet, but I got some specific factors in mind as to why I was a bit of a gimp for many years. And I think it's understandable because it wasn't necessarily being a gimp of my own uh, willpower or making. That was exterior influence. But what I will say is I over the past couple of years, especially over the course of 2020 since, I've really taken to reestablishing my identity as somebody who asserts control. And I've had a lot of improvement. I mean, I'm not perfect in this yet, but I have that motive. I have that energy. It's just a matter of translating that into actual behavior. So the spirit of this, if you're speaking again to more of what, I guess, this particular entry is alluding to of what the song could mean more abstractly, I see that. Maybe for people out there, maybe you're somebody who's listened to this and you've interpreted it entirely in a different way. Feel free to let me know your thoughts down below as well as maybe perhaps if you're a first impression, or for, if this is the first impression for you on Five Finger Death Punch you've never listened to them before, what do you think? Or perhaps you're a long-time listener of Five Finger Death Punch. Where do you think this song fits, you know, overall? Is it a favorite for you? Or you know, where would you rank it if 
I sometimes get confused on rankings too, so I get maybe that's a bit of a confusing you know, uh, um, uh, question to assert. But you're like, I don't know how I would rank this. I, I deal with that question quite a bit. I don't necessarily know. My answers change. But if you have a general impression, feel free to let me know down below. But long story short, it's a good track. Fits with the style that FFTP is known for, both in the lyrics and um, with. You know, the song overall, it's a very good tune, very enjoyable. It's going to be a great playlist entry, I'm sure, you know, to fit in where I go put it on the car, and probably on maybe a higher volume than I should, as I've done past with previous uh, Five Figure Death Punch tracks. But if this is conveying, like, the spirit of the album overall as well, I think it's going to be a pretty good listen. As much as, you know, F8 was in some of the previous work, I think Afterlife has shaped up to be a pretty strong release. Thank you so much for watching this video. Before you bounce, feel free to drop a like and comment, subscribe to this channel with a ding on the bell, and share this video with your friends. And consider checking out the description here. There you'll find links to my other channels, as well as addresses to my other social media accounts and ways you can help support my work if you feel so inclined. May God bless you, and looking forward to when our paths cross again.